Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to run the game Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis on the Apple Silicon Mac. So there is no Mac port of this game I'm afraid. The only way to play this is to run this using the Windows version of Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Technically the Apple Silicon Mac could play this if the developers allowed the iPhone port to work on the Mac. However, this isn't an option. So today we're going to be using the Windows version of the game on Steam. In order to run Windows games, we're going to be using something called D3D Metal from Gameport toolkit and we're going to be using a utility called crossover so in this tutorial video today i'm going to show you the entire process of how to do this on a mac we're going to download crossover we're going to get windows games and applications working like final fantasy 7 ever crisis i'm going to show you the settings that you need to turn on in order to get this to work and how to play final fantasy 7 ever crisis the best way on your apple silicon mac so the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 months support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here. And then you're going to get a 20% discount. Discount. I mean, once already, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the try now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. We're going to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the Crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here, we'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64-bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of progress is going to happen in the background you don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in and now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within Crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam. Press exit here. So now that the Steam bottle has been created, we can just change some settings here. What I advise you to do is to turn on D3D Metal, which is Game Porting Toolkit's translation layer. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on M-Sync, which is a Mac specific alternative to E-Sync. And this is going to help improve performance as well. And once that's ready, we're going to double click on Steam and log in again. So then we're going to go to the store and then do a search for Final Fantasy Ever Crisis. And then we're going to download the Windows version of this game. So just click play game here and let's go add it to our library. And then we're going to install it into its default location. Here we're going to accept the end user licensing agreement, press accept, and then it's going to start its download. So just let that finish. So once the game's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and press the play button and it's going to go ahead and launch. The game's just launching now, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. You can see in the title bar here and that's full screened. And here we have Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. So tap to start. So we can, here we can change the graphic settings. I'm going to set the ultra graphic setting and press confirm. We're going to accept the terms of service and privacy policy. Here the game's loading. We can either play the tutorial or skip it. I'm going to play the tutorial. So here we're going to download 2.2 gigabytes of data. Press download. That's downloading now. So as you can see, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis works pretty well on the Apple Silicon Mac. This is running on the M1 Max chip and we're getting pretty good frame rates despite the fact that this is a Windows game. This is a DirectX 11 game being translated to Metal using D3D Metal from Game Porting Toolkit. It's also running through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. But despite this, it's actually running pretty well. There are not that many stutters and the game allows you to log in correctly onto the online service. So overall, it's a pretty good experience. It's a shame that there is no native Mac quest port because there is of course an iphone port which could technically work just fine on the apple silicon mac however we have to make use of this workaround if you want to play this on a mac anyway i hope you found this video useful thanks for watching and i'll see you the next one